A-L. You are now rocking with that dude Pascal. We be going wild. Haitian in the building. So, so, so original. Got the haters. Got your feelings. Get your hands up to the ceiling. And keep them held high. Cause only this is ready. Forget about it. Goodbye. Hold up. We're just saying hi. Five somebody rise up. We days. Catch us live. Somebody was go. Good afternoon. Good evening and good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you, hope you guys are all doing well out there. Hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful, fantastic Friday, as you guys all deserve it, and then some. You know, uh, let me just say this really quick. There's, there's, we're, we're taking a tiny bit of a break, okay, from the Madeline Soto situation, because I, I understand everybody and their mama is talking about it like a mother lover. Real talk, everybody in the, the true crime pool. Okay, in this little pond of true crime, everybody, they mama talking about it, which is understandable. But we really do need to talk about some a few things here. And there's some things that are going on in other cases, especially a case that's been I wouldn't say it's wrapped up, but it's still it's at the tail end of it. Now we're going into hopefully getting justice for this young girl. Okay, but there's been new developments. Something else just came out in regards to family members speaking out, especially those who actually lived with this little girl. Yes, I was hoping that this would happen one day. I didn't know it was going to happen so damn fast, but I'm here for it. And probably, most likely, you guys are here for it too. I got things to say. I got some opinions about this uh, interview. We're going to talk about it. Um, I don't want to get uh, too ahead of myself, as I like to do, okay? But nonetheless, taking a little bit of a break from Madeline Soto. We've been talking about other cases as well, okay? There are some things that we will be bringing up and talking about tomorrow, most likely, because your man is busy, okay? Doing some, been working out here, okay? Um, but we will be circling back to Madeline and a discussion on Madeline tomorrow for sure, okay? So be on the lookout for that, all right? But for those of y'all who just want a little bit of a break, get some new updates, some new developments, and hear a different side to this Audrey Cunningham case, this show is just for you, okay? This goes out to you, 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 never mind. Another deep cut. Moving on, please do me a favor. Hit that like button down below. All right. Crush it. Slap it. Whatever you need to do. Okay. Smack it up. Flip it. Rub it down. Just hit the like button. Please be sure to do that. Hit that reaction button if you're watching on Facebook, please. And thank you. You know your boy's working hard out here in these screens. And these lives are not easy all the time. Dag nabbit. Okay. Dag nabbit. So please show some love by simply hitting that reaction button, hitting that like button. Okay. Also, another way that you can show some support, crush that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube, crush that follow button on Facebook if you're watching over there on the on the book of faces. That'd be greatly appreciated. Follow me on all my social medias. The Pascal Show, one word, where I'm on TikTok, I'm on IG, I'm on the X, aka Twitter. Go over there, show some love, please, and thank you. Go over there, get your ass on those social medias and follow my ass. Okay? Also, hit that join button down below if you're watching on YouTube. Become a member, okay? It's not that expensive, okay? I don't ask for too much. I just need a little bit of support. Keep these purple lights on. So please, hit that join button down below. Join Patreon, okay? Patreon.com forward slash The Pascal Show. It's going that way on the ticker down below me right now as well. Show some support. Check out PascalMerch.com. There's a lot of great stuff over there. Handcrafted stuff by these two hands. Yes, I do many things under the sun. Oh, the man, this man does not sleep, okay? I do not, but I do it out of love, all right? So please go support in any way you can. Okay, guys. Now I know that we have been we have talked about this at great lengths about this this case. Obviously we have found out about what happened to this young girl or actually we don't know everything that happened to this young girl, but what I'm talking about is the case of Audrey Cunningham, okay? She was a kid, okay? She was a freaking kid. Long story short, I'm going to try to abbreviate this as best as I can. She was, at the time, reports were saying, when she was reported missing, they said 
a person, which we will talk about here in shortly, and you know my my nickname for this mother lover, okay? But allegedly, a person dropped her off, okay, at her school bus stop, all right? And then she was never heard or seen from ever again. Obviously, there's been a lot of stories and a lot of information that's been flying left and right about this particular individual having conversations with her biological mom, saying that they were going to get together uh, and have a little bit of a rendezvous so that she can have some time with her daughter and get to know her daughter. Now, the person that I'm talking about that said, oh, yeah, you know, I uh, I, I dropped her off and, uh, you know, I, I, I you know, the uh, she she went to school and all that. The person I'm talking about is, uh, well, I call them taters, okay? Mm -hmm, taters, okay? I mean, look at him with that wayward eye. Just on him, I'm just I'm just trashing him. I'm just roasting this mother lover because he's he's trash. I've been calling him, you know, garbage water as well, dog water, okay? But you know, we always seem to come back to taters, mm -mm -mm, taters. Remember, he, I ain't got no clothes on. Remember that guy? Yeah, this is the same dude. All right. We soon later found out that he was sending out these text messages to Audrey's mom to try to throw police off his scent. And also try to make it seem like the mom had something to do so sinister with the disappearance of her daughter. Of course, these are, these are very broad strokes here because we, if you haven't seen it or ha don't know much about this story, by all means, please go check out my uh, playlist. I think I have a playlist on this one. If I don't, there will be one by the end of this, after the end of this show. But please go check out the playlist revolving around Audrey Cunningham's case. But of course, police, et cetera, extended agencies were searching high and low trying to find her. They found her book bag at first in a dam, okay? And in fact, the area in which I think they were supposed to meet, where Audrey was supposed to meet with her mother, and this is the conversation that Taters had with the mom via social media, okay, in these DMs. After much search, after much work, they found her in the river tied to a rock. Of course, we've heard a lot of things about this man, Taters, this piece of trash, okay? There's a lot of footage, a lot of photos of him that have circulated out here in these internet streets. People have been talking about this guy and members of the family like crazy. Now, one of the things that really, I, I'm sure, aggravates a lot of people is people are wondering, with this guy, with Taters, let me let me just pull up Taters one more time, okay? With Taters, in fact, let me see if I can find a one of his sexy photos, okay? I don't know. Maybe I deleted that all at this point. I think I deleted it all because I just had enough of seeing his mugly age. But it looks like I don't I don't have any photos of Taters. Um. Yeah, I don't have any photos of taters except for this one. So I'm just going to pull this back up. All right. But as we learn more about taters, okay, this dude is trash, okay? We find out that this man has a rap sheet as long as my body. And some of them have to do with enticing littles. Now, here's the thing. One thing that I want to point out, which we've talked at exhaustion, okay? We've we've talked about this at nauseum, okay? Yes, the system is messed up. The system is absolutely mucked up, and they really need to do everything they can to figure some stuff out, okay? They really need to figure some stuff out when it comes to people who are getting hit with misdemeanors that have to do with littles, okay? Where it should immediately put be put on the registered SO list. And you know what I mean by SO. And this mother lover is the Facebook, the Facebook, is the face of SO, okay? I mean, if you go into the into the dictionary and look up, what's it, you know, registered SO, his face should show up. He's the staple face of registered SO, but he never was really registered as an SO. But one thing I do want to point out is that in his record, which is very extensive, 
he has a history of doing some really, really bad things that should have been put, that should have had him put on this registered SL. In fact, we uh, we saw one of the girls, one of the uh, survivors of one of his incidents with her came forward, talked about this experience when she was a, a little and all this stuff, okay? It's absolutely crazy. And how traumatized that now adult woman, that now adult survivor, okay? How traumatized she is even to this day. And the fact that this monster was lurking here, out here in these streets, living his doggone life and doing whatever. Now, one of the other things, too, okay? And uh, now, you know, now that I'm, I'm thinking about it, I, 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 I keep wondering if I still have that piece, too. And I don't know if I do. But one thing that uh, really aggravates me, okay, is, of course, nope, of course, the family spoke out, all right? Because let's okay, just so you guys know, and let me put up a better photo without taters in there, because you know, I can't I can't stand that ass. Okay. But we later on find out a lot of things with, with Audrey and how she was living in this house with this guy, with taters, living in this camper, literally just smacked up against the damn house. It looked like a it was so close that it looked like it was an extension of the doggone house, okay? Clearly, this man had easy access to go in and out, to and fro, have conversations, and get in close with this young girl. This man lived in very close proximity with not only Audrey, but her biological father and her grandmother. Now, I'm starting to hear that there are grandparents living in that house, so there were a grandpa and grandma living in this house. The family that lived in this house made a joint statement a, f a few weeks back. You remember that? We all saw it. And we read that ish. We read that ridiculous trash where they said, hey, oh, uh, we're, we thought we were going the godly route. They, they took the path of righteousness as an excuse. Oh, we wanted to give this man a second chance. Everybody deserves a second chance. Do you know my, how many chances this, this taters had? Countless chances. Countless. And yet they said, well, we wanted to give him a chance. He seemed okay. We looked him up. We didn't see anything about him being uh, on. He wasn't on the, the registry. He wasn't on no SO list. So we said, come on in. Right? But let's not forget the countless offenses that he was in, arrested for, that he was thrown in jail for. You can even see on the record pieces of information like enticing littles. And of course, I'm using code words, but you get what I'm saying. Things that would put him on, should have put him on the registered SO list. Because this mother love is a dirty, grimy lurker. Right? But this family believes in second chances. I'm sorry. I don't mean to chuckle. But this man used that card a long time ago. Okay? So now... We are at a place where the family is speaking out. Parents, grandparents want to speak. They want to say their piece. In a way, it's like, no, 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 no. I got something to say. I need to say my piece. So now they're doing an exclusive interview. This is the full, uninterrupted, full extended 35-minute Peace. And we have got to watch it as a family because I'm going to, I have got, I watched this whole thing and I'm just like, and you see it, you see it in the title above or down below. This is nothing but excuses. There is not once any piece of accountability and taking responsibility for bad judgment. Listen, what happened before we can go into this? What happened to this young girl is unbelievable. And honestly, in the most pristine of settings, lurkers and P-words, okay, 
are out here and they can grab you even if it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what race you are it doesn't matter how much money you got in your bank account it doesn't matter if you're giving a person a second chance or if they're smiling in your face and they are abiding by the rules of society paying their taxes and being a good you know member of society there are still lurkers out here dirty and clean that that look dirty and are dirty and look clean, but are dirty and grimy as hell. Let's keep that a buck. But at the same time, if you're doing your due diligence and you hear and know that this person has had a very checkered past, why? Or a rap sheet like this man has. Why? Oh, why would you put the big bad wolf inside your own home with access to your own little kid? I said my piece. We're going to take a look at this. We have got to take a look again. I understand. Ish happens. Bad things happen. Evil does as evil does. Okay. Evil is as evil does. Whatever the hell it is. Stupid is as stupid does. Okay. Evil is as stupid does. Okay. But at the, or evil is as evil does. That's what I mean. But you, you see what I'm saying. Okay. Doesn't matter. I get it. But at the same time, there was ways to prevent this situation from happening, and they're not taking any accountability. They're still leaning on righteousness. They're still leaning on, oh, my, uh, we, we, got the, we got the thumbs up from our friend, from friends of his. Let's take a look at this. Please do me a favor as we watch this together as a family, hit that like button down below. Okay. Send it past, send it past. Let's get it past 400 likes. Okay. A like don't cost a thing. That'd really mean a lot. Do not forget to crush that subscribe button, please. And thank you. Okay. Your boy's working hard out here in these streets. Let's get into this. Shall we hit the number one? Let me know. You guys can hear this as well as we play the interview. Um, I guess let's start mm. with Audrey. Who, if you had to introduce her to somebody that never met her before, how would you introduce Audrey? She didn't need any introduction. She would come to you and she just was a loving, caring, compassionate child. We, we taught her that there was no difference in the world, you know, to not judge people by their exterior, to learn their heart. She was amazing. She loved coming to work with me and helping with the elderly folks, bring in little Christmas gifts or just whatever she could do. She was just full of love and life. And she she was creative in a way that amazed us sometimes that she would paint a picture. I mean, she's 11 years old, so she still was learning, but our refrigerator was often covered with all of her little drawings and and paintings that she did, and we encouraged it. Uh, we gave her coloring sets, and she would make them and hand them out to people, teachers at school, uh, other kids in her class. People as, in our families. So she just, she loved her artwork. And animals. She was the animal lover extraordinaire. She wanted to be a vet. She wanted to work with animals. She said either vet or animal trainer. Really? And she didn't care if it was both. She was so full of ambition. What were some of the things that Audrey loved to do, loved to be? Animals. Any animal in this neighborhood knew Audrey, and Audrey knew them. She loved her, all of her pets. You know, they're all rescues, and she treated them like they were completely loved and mm -mm -mm. groomed them. And she just anything to do with animals and art. That's all. And she quite often throughout the neighborhood, she would help other other neighbors with their animals, take them for walks, stop and pet them on her way to school or way home. We could even hear her going to school because the dogs would would bark and she would go over and say hi to them. <clears throat> and uh, that's just who she was. That's why the neighborhood 
just turned out they all knew her even more than we we understood you know, all the neighbors knew her listen um first off hearing any type of information about her as a person as a kid how talented she was how beautiful she was how much she loved animals and all that stuff i mean let's be real it's it's hard to hear that kind of stuff you know you if you are a parent or even not if you just care about human beings in general um it's it's hard to hear this stuff but you know maybe you know it, it's just hard to think that you had someone who was this young in this environment you put the, you had you brought the big bad wolf into the house in the vicinity you knew of this man's checkered past whether it was just you know broad strokes or a little bit you knew that this man had a checkered past you know i just feel like the conversation or this situation would have been different if other things were if things were approached a little bit differently I, of course i got to jump in in this in and out for fair use and all that crap but you know it's it's hard to hear no matter what, my heart breaks for this family because they shouldn't have to go through this at all. No family should ever have to go through this. And I'm not sitting here saying that this is all their fault and how dare they. But at the same time, there's certain things that could have been done to prevent this thing from happening. But the fact that they're not even doing any type of internal look into themselves, okay? Just an internal look into themselves for a second. It's it's just it's frustrating, guys. It's just frustrating. Let's continue. Because she would stop and say hi to them, talk to them. One of the neighbors gave her a bicycle, so she could ride it to the to the bus stop. Another neighbor let her park her bicycle in front of their house to get on the bus. Her dog would jump over the fence and follow her to the bus stop. Hmm. Um, Cute dog. And then he would come right back and lay down outside their kennel. And then at in the time for school, it was like the dog had a like a time clock in it. She'd walk over and oh. you know, walk her part way home. Just so you guys know, yes, uh, I want to make that abundantly clear too. Yes, uh, this is the this is the grandma, and uh, allegedly the granddad that lived in the house with the dad with bio dad okay just so you guys know this is the reason why this interview is so infuriating this is the reason why i'm having such a guttural reaction to this interview because these are the grandparents that actually lived in the house with not only audrey and her dad but also was neighbors <laughs> i don't know ground mates okay with taters real talk so this is the reason why this one's frustrating if this was the extended the uh the mother side the maternal side grandparents and all that i'd have a totally different reaction to this you know these are the ones that were laying down in bed knowing that this guy was around real talk they allowed this man into the into their house, into their home. They were going on trips with this man, with his hate tattoos and whatnot. Okay, Let's, don't worry. We're we're getting right into it. We're just getting warmed up. Let's go. She just she had that kind of bond with her animals. Yeah. And you said she liked to spend a lot of time in the backyard. This was her playground. This was she'd run and play with her brother let the dogs out and play with them, you know, play with the cats. We started a garden, her and I, and uh, we were supposed to do that before she went missing. And I had made a promise, so I'm keeping my promise. But that was our, that was our peace. That was our, we want to break away from everything. We want to just have a peaceful time and so that was, that's what we did. If she wasn't out here playing, we were out playing in the dirt, attempting very 
and I use the word attempting <laughs> to grow things. She was so proud that we had radishes and jalapenos. <laughs> you just thought we had grown like the bumper crop. She was, any little thing was big to her. And she did odd jobs for me, cleaned my shop. Hold on real quick. I just want you to see the camper. I don't know if the camper moved. I don't know if they moved the camper, but see that this camper right here, I, I, I'm assuming this is the camper that he lived in. Okay. But I think they moved it because before it was right where they're sitting. You see what I'm saying? From what it looked like in the uh, from the overhead photos, uh, video, et cetera. Remember the camper? I think that's the very camper that's in the background right there. Okay. That camper ain't bad looking. Yeah, fat boy, fat baby. Okay. That's a nice camper. Okay. From my understanding, that is uh, uh, the camper itself. And that was right up against like where he's sitting, where they are sitting right here is where the camper allegedly was, was at from my recollection. Okay. And that's pretty crazy. Doesn't matter if it was, doesn't matter if it was right here or right where the inner, where the, uh, uh, the reporter's sitting, no matter what, he was in very close proximity to that crib. Okay. Very close proximity. Okay. And uh, Lauren S., if you didn't get a no notification, please be sure to hit like refresh or like turn off your notification bell and turn it back on, set it to all. In fact, everybody else, please do that as well if you're not getting notifications and whatnot. Okay. That'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. I appreciate all y'all being in here. Um, also, I'm going to say this too. I'm thinking about going to CrimeCon in a couple months, I'm thinking about it. But that is just expensive, yo. Like that stuff is expensive. They, they, these tr us true crimer podcasters and streamers and YouTubers, we ain't making that kind of money. You know what I'm saying? I ain't making that Annie Elise money. You know what I'm saying? Damn, I ain't making that Nancy Grace money. That is just expensive, yo. Damn. I'll be completely real. All right, but I'm thinking about it. But at the same time, I don't know. That's just, ugh, that is expensive, yo. Okay helped with the recycling so she could earn a little money and the next thing we know we're at church and she puts that money in the collection at church not for herself it was always for for others you wanted to do this interview today why i want audrey's story out i want people to understand um there's so much disinformation here we you know, go there's Mm -hmm. Just there's too many things that people don't know. So many people are focused on the monster. And, and he's not the her. story. Hold on. How is he not the story when he really is part of he's part of the story? How is he not the st you see what I'm saying? He's the biggest problem here. OK. Oh, oh. And, and real quick, I'm not throwing any shade to Annie Elise. Let me tell you, th she's a beast. She's amazing. Great content. <laughs> no shade to Annie Elise. Let me make that abundantly clear. OK. Um, but, you know, I, I don't make that. I don't make that money You like that. OK. You know, we, we working hard out here in these streets, but I ain't making that. Shoot. I ain't pushing a pushing a, a Benz. I ain't driving around in an Audi or some some ish. You know what I mean? I'm just a regular dude out here. OK. Uh, so those tickets, even just for general admission, are way too expensive. Okay, I'm gonna keep it a buck. All right. So just saying that out loud. All right. But you know, true crime people and crime con people don't come at me. All I'm saying is you might want to reconsider the the ticket prices because yo, there's a lot of people that would love to be able to be there, but just for general admission, damn, yo. Damn. Okay, that's ex yeah. Okay, way expensive. Okay, now we're getting into this stuff. Okay, Jesus, they're sitting there saying, "Oh, oh, he's not the he's not the story. He's part of the story. He's one of the biggest parts of the story. If he wasn't in here, there would be no story about Audrey right now." You wouldn't be wearing purple and spray hair, uh, hair spraying purple into your hair if it wasn't for him being a part of this story. Come on, guys. Come on, man. He is not the story. He will be when he goes to, to court. But right now, it's about the families 
uh, it's it's about Audrey the reason why she captivated East Texas when the Amber Alert went out is because of who she was who who she became as a young lady uh, she was only 11 but she had a personality that was much older much bigger and you say the story is not about the monster do you feel like the narrative has been like that a lot of people have made it more about the monster more about how did how did a monster like that get here you know blame they like blaming everybody and the fact of the matter is they're not blaming the right people here we go you guys ready for this roller coaster ride <laughs> Woo! like you know here we go there there is blame to be placed yes and if they want that story yeah that's about the monster with a little girl who trusted and loved without condition that needs to be the story it's not about him what he did was awful and i will no, always have to live with that but i didn't i didn't see that monster there wasn't any way to get all that information you know put blame where it's at with him with a flawed legal system that allowed for all these things to happen and me to not have that ability you know there's there is a lot of love that's been shown but the people that are hateful you don't understand you have no idea how much i blame myself how much i blame i have enough guilt and hate for myself because of it but i use the tools i was given and it wasn't enough it yeah. wasn't enough we we saw the good side of him i mean he showed us what he wanted us to see he was formerly incarcerated but we had no idea we checked his his sex offender registry and he did not show up on it let's get okay can i just say something really quick okay uh because i you know i have a heart okay i do have a heart and yes these two are hurting i'm sure the dad's hurting too but he hasn't said not one damn thing and i'd love to hear what the dad has to say about things too but moving back into the to grandma i could only imagine what mama grandma is going through let's be real she lost a loved one she lost a little girl yes that is hurtful it hurts like crazy and i can only imagine what she's going through but that's that's what they should have let off with first they shouldn't be sitting here going oh everybody's you know everybody's concerned about the story about the guy no because it sounds disconnected it sounds like you're you're disjointed in not understanding what the general public is is really reacting in such a guttural way we're all reacting to this because there could have been other ways of keeping this monster at bay that did not happen and now you're pushing blame on anything else except yourself there's choices that you guys could have made as well yes the system's broken i 110 percent agree with that it's messed up that they that they uh, let him just slide through the cracks like he like the the snake and piece of trash that taters is but at the same time you're looking at his police record, his arrest record? Are you sure you're really doing that? Because it doesn't sound like you did. Because no matter what, you would have still seen enticing, enticing, enticing a couple times on his rap sheet. Let's not forget all the aggravated A's, all the other things that he has done, and then some, the laundry list of a rap sheet that he had. That would instantly make me stop dead in my tracks and go, nah, bro, you're going to have to go and find another place. You, you, happy trails, my brother. Happy trails, but uh, you ain't living with us. That's just all I'm saying. All right, but let's continue. Uh, we had friends that knew him years and years ago that said he was a good guy that just got caught up in in bad, bad things, and he admitted to many of the things that he had done yeah. but none of them were anywhere near what 
he played what happened he played us all he showed us a side that wanted to get clean and that everything he had done was uh. attributed to drugs uh. okay i'm sorry i know i'm gonna be i'm gonna be through this part this is the mo this is the stickiest part for me okay sure he finessed these two he he probably finessed the family but at the same time this is where i feel like they're not telling the truth i'm sorry i'm i'm gonna, i'm going to say it i'm going to keep it a buck okay i don't care i don't care i don't think they're telling the truth right now and you might be asking why pascal why because here's the thing if you really did your due diligence as you say you did you would have noticed his rap sheet. His rap sheet's really, really bad. If you're looking at that, would you? I'm just asking, fam. And I'm sure this is a vi this is a ground ball question, y'all. Okay? This is a bunt for crying out loud. Okay? This is a very easy question to answer. Just throw it right over the first baseball reference. Anyway, if you saw this man's rap sheet... He's coming up to you going, hey, I just need a chance. I'm trying to get, you know, it's, all the things that happened were because of drugs. You know, it was, it, I was just, you know, just the taters. Just high all the time and just, just really needed to fix. But I'm changed now. And then you go, okay. You pull up your phone. You go up to the computer, whatever. You clickety-clack. You see a rap sheet. Forget enticing. Forget maybe you didn't see that. Let's just be real. Maybe you're that, you know, you're getting old. Your eyes aren't that good. You know what I mean? Your eyes are tired. But you see on there countless things where he's been in and out of prison since 1998. A rap sheet as long as your whole body. Now, I ask you, fam. Would you let this man live under your roof with your littles? Within the same vicinity? I'll tell you what. Y'all going to sit here and say, hell to the no, hell no. Okay, let's continue. And it wasn't. But because he was so convincing and forthcoming with what he said, and that he wanted to get off the drugs, and he wanted a new life, I mistakenly and stupidly believe that. But before all that, because my granddaughter and my daughter <coughs> and everybody in this house was important to me, I checked that sex offender registry. I checked that sex offender registry because I thought I was protecting her. This is when they start doing, they start, you know, with the fingers and twisting their, their wrists and bending their hands in a way to point at what? The law. And it didn't show up because somebody allowed him to plead down and not have to register. And that one thing could have saved my granddaughter. Oh my God. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, like I said, I feel for her. Really, I can't believe what happened. I can't believe it's not butter. Okay, seriously, I, I feel for her big time. But at the same time, you're telling me that that one moment you went into registry, you didn't see a name, his name up there. So you're like, whew, okay, he ain't that bad. Well, you saw the rap sheet that didn't stop. You. I'm sorry. What the? F but now, now that this tragedy happens, you're going the law. It's all because of the law. We, 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 I, I had tools that were bestowed upon me as a blessing from God. What? This was a monster. Did you see his face? Did you see that wayward eye? Just looking off left like a mother lover, taters, looking all skew, and you didn't sit there and go, well, maybe he's not worth the time in my house. What? You didn't see the hateful tats one summer, one simmery summer day out there sitting on your, on your porch, on your rocking chair, woo, batting. The mosquitoes away and the gnats, it is just so hot and sweltery. And he just happens to walk on by. And you didn't see the tattoos on his shoulder. You did not once think about that for a second. But now you're going like, 
No, it's the it's all the law. Yes, the law screwed up for show. But you had decisions to make for yourself. Come on, miss me with this nonsense, y'all. <sighs> see, see, woo side. This is what I need pressure points right now. Because this is the kind. No, take some accountability. All I'm asking is to take a little bit of accountability. But you're, you're, you're trying to play victim right now. You're trying to make it seem like, oh, it's all the law's fault. If only I was able to clickety-clack onto one page on a website and see his name underneath this, then it wouldn't have happened. You saw, allegedly saw his rap sheet. Come on, man. Give me a break. Just give me a break. Take some accountability and just say, man, I messed up. We, we stumbled. Yes, we believe in, we believe this guy. We gave him a chance. We didn't really look at his, at his uh, rap sheet. We made some mistakes. And let the people that are watching this and seeing this tragedy unfold use this as a learning lesson, as a, 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 a way to stop monsters and lurkers going inside their homes and doing exactly what happened to Audrey to their child. That's what you should be doing right now. Forget all this. Quit pointing, doing the blame game and pointing at other people. You had choices yourself. <sighs> Welcome to the show. Sorry, I'm sorry, guys, but this this angers me. This really angers me because you th this now the, the the narrative that they're trying to run with is ridiculous, and I feel for them. I really do. This is terrible. What they how they lost this beautiful child, but at the same time they should be taking this and showing us this is a learning, massive learning and wake up call for all of us out here in all of these streets, internationally and domestically, we need to be very vigilant on who we invite into our homes, especially when it comes to the protection and the safety of our children. I will continue. But first, the Super Chat. Reality, thank you so much for the uh, for the 10. I appreciate it. Pascal, who the F needs a rap sheet or registry you need to see that after what this dude tells you already? Exactly. He was like, yeah, I've been, I've been bad, you know, but it was all because of drugs. What? Instantly, I'm like, no, I don't want, I don't even want chemicals inside of my home. I don't want that influence in, anywhere near my child. My child's an angel. You know what I'm saying? She will go through this world unsullied. You know what I'm saying? But you said, well, you know, God says, give him another chance. Ah, Jesus. Literally. What? No, I'm sorry, sir. Goodbye. That should have been uh, should have been enough. Absolutely, I agree. I'm sorry for yelling. I'm gonna stop yelling. I'm just this angers me so much. <sighs> okay, I did. <sighs> when it comes to kids, man, don't 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 you try. Mm -mm. Not with me. Not when it comes to kids. I will. Mm, like I said before. Doesn't even need to be my child. I'll just go straight tribal on your ass. I don't give a damn. Okay? And there's nobody out here protecting them, it seems like sometimes. What the what the flim farm filth is going on here? <sighs> okay. Jenny, thank you so much for the 10. I'm gonna calm down. All right. Sorry. <sighs> I love you guys. Let's continue. And I'm going to try to get through this a little bit. In fact, I'm going to speed it up just a tiny bit because I don't have a whole lot of time. And I know I'm reacting so big. We're going to speed it up just a tiny bit. Let's continue. You guys are amazing. Thank you for letting me vent. Woosa, everybody. Woosa. Because he never would have been here. Mm. Never. But because we accepted him mm. for who he was and tried to help him get a second start. I mean, that's... That's what our faith believes. Their faith believes in second chances, but this man had many, many chances. I'm just saying, this is not a second chance. This was his like 30th chance. Moving on. Is, you forgive. Uh, he had served his time. Uh, he, nobody was giving him help. Nobody was. He was homeless. And so we said, we have a camper out back. You could stay in that. And he was getting odd jobs. He had a girlfriend. Um, Doesn't he was matter. He to get his life together. We don't understand what happened. We don't want to understand what triggered you know exactly what happened, okay? 
This dude <laughs> is a career criminal. Everything triggers him. Let's keep it real, okay? If the wind blows right, it triggered him. He wanted to do a little B and E. He's gonna do it. The sun is shining. A raindrop hits the roof of that camper. He's going to go and get him some smack. It doesn't matter. Okay? Career criminal, period, point blank. What happened? Audrey loved him, treated him like part of the family. We, we just don't, there was don't understand. I go through every day, was there a sign of anything? Every day I wonder if I missed something. But I don't know. Every day I wonder if I miss something. <sighs> mm, I'm, I'm really trying. So, I'm biting my tongue so hard. I am trying to be so respectful. I really am. But dear God. What the? F I never saw any indication that she was being harmed. If she was, you would have seen those signs and I never saw them. Do you feel that you, you were aware of his history and you were going to give him a second chance like a lot of people were passing over on him? and you went a step further and you checked that registry, did you feel that that gave you peace of mind and that you did your due diligence before I letting did. somebody stay here? I did. That was our largest concern, you know, because the, the, I think people have come to depend on the registry to, I mean, you look on it and unfortunately that is part of our society. And some of it is earned. Some of, some of them are truly needed to be on the registry. Some of them were just, they got caught up in the moment and they wound up on the registry. So mm. there is gray areas in the registry, but then there's a big dark hole where people who committed a sexual assault mm -hmm. wound up plea bargaining down to a misdemeanor. Like what Stephen McDougal, Don, Donald Stephen McDougal, Taters, did this. Exactly what he's saying right here, which is true. He slipped through the cracks. He found a gray area, or at least his lawyer did, and he was able to get his, his name off the registry, which is absolutely, um, it's actually, it's really amazing, okay? And I don't mean amazing in a good way. It's amazing. I don't know how they did that, and that's jacked up, and that needs to change. Hence the reason why they're starting this, they're pushing a, uh, um, Audrey, uh, um, Audrey Law or something like that, which you're going to hear in just a second which is the positive thing out of this interview here, okay? And because it's only a misdemeanor, they didn't have to register. That's the hole that we want to work on closing. Uh, Crime Stoppers of Houston have offered to help us go to the Texas State Legislature and uh, promote a bill, which we're going to call Audrey's Law. Audrey's Law. To help close that loophole. If they started out with a sexual assault and they plea bargain it down, they still should register. So people know that that person has that history. And then you can make up your decision and base your actions on that. We I agree 110%. The only positive thing out of this whole doggone interview is this part right here. This part right here. They, they're they taking this negative situation and sure, they, they bent the narrative a little bit to make it sound like something, you know, to to light a little bit more fire under this under this uh, Audrey's law, okay? You know, because of what happened, all right? But at the same time, uh, this is great, and I'm with that 100%. In fact, Audrey's law should be something throughout the entire country, okay? That's what I really do believe. There should be, I feel like there should be zero tolerance, on mother lovers out here that are exposing, doing whatever, lurking, uh, getting grabsy, whatever. I don't care if you got one of the best lawyers in town. They should still be put on that list no matter what. I'm just saying. Real talk. But moving on. Let's continue. We just didn't have the tools. And, and to do background checks they're on everybody, they're, they're ex extremely expensive. So you want, going through all of this, you want to help other families so they never have to be in this situation again? Ab absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're planning on... Way to fill this pain. So many people don't understand how much it hurts. And That's we, something I have to live with for the rest of my life. And we look at the Amber Alert system. It is being used more and more and more. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that indicates change in society, but it indicates that there is problems out there in society. And we would like to help be part of the solution, You know, not for our personal gain, but for the memory of Audrey. I mean, she was a wonderful child and became a, a victim of senseless, senseless violence.
Mm. And there's far too many kids that are in that same situation that we would like to somehow help them. We know there's other families doing exactly the same thing somewhere. And I don't want them to have to go through this. There's other families that are giving in nature. How do they know? I don't want to see this happen again. Not to anyone at all, ever. And you said you feel some of the blame, but the blame isn't solely on this family? No. I don't feel like it is. I felt like I was doing the Christian thing. I felt like I checked the registry that failed me. <sighs> see what I'm saying? Now, like I said, this whole thing is her going, both of them are spinning this narrative. They're spinning a narrative to put all blame on the system and not taking any accountability for themselves on the free will of choice. Let's not forget they had a choice to let this man live in that camper or not. Whether or not they looked up the registry or not and just saw on social media, but this is what I think ha actually happened. I'm going to keep it very quick, okay? But this is my theory. Obviously, they've been living on social media since the time that she went missing, since the time that everybody's been sliding into the group chat, talking wirelessly on, on, on the group chats, get, staying hiding behind the QWERTY keyboard, putting in their two cents, and also doing their due diligence about Taters. And then when they found out that Taters was not a registered one, but he had a history of having things in his past, they were consuming that information too. And I think that they had time to conduct, to construct a narrative that would make sense to them at least. And it would push, try to push some of the tension off of them, right? Off of the, no, you failed, Audrey, right? That whole narrative. I see some of you guys saying that in the chat as well, right? They had time to construct. Notice that they didn't put out a statement until much later, until right around the time that she was found. That's when they were saying, well, we were just, we believe in second chances. We we're, we were writing on Jesus Christ and in, in our, in our Christian faith and all this stuff. But they also had time to read people's comments, watch YouTube videos and listen to podcasts and watch the news and what they had to say. And then they were able to construct their own narrative. I do believe that they did not look up this man's record. That's what I feel in my, in my bones. I feel it all the way down to my marrow. I don't think that they looked at any. I don't think they looked at anything. I think that they took, they took other people vouching for him. And they, uh, they liked his swagger. I feel like he finessed them. But now that this young girl is gone and they saw in the news that he was supposed to, he should have been registered, they go, wait a second, that's messed up. And yes, we looked things up. All we saw was a little bit of his rap sheet. We didn't see much. But we didn't see that he, was reg he wasn't registered at all. Right? And now they have a reason to create Audrey's Law and seek some sort of version of justice now because of something that they should have done before they even let this man enter their home. That's what I think. I don't think they ever looked anything up about this guy. I think they took him at face value, and I think that they believed their son, the father of this, of this young girl, and they just let it be what it was. Yeah, he had a history of, you know, using the chemicals, so on and so forth. That's it. I don't think there's anything more than that. That's just what I think. But, you know, I could be wrong. A lot of times I am. But something about this just screams they had time to think. They know that the general public, the court of public opinion is going in on them right now. If they were to sit there and go, no, we didn't look anything up. Do you realize how much they would be? They'd be crucified out here in these social media streets. Think about it, guys. Think about it. Do me a favor, though, guys. Please hit that like button down below. I see a bunch of y'all in here. Okay. 
If you're watching on X, please, by all means, and Facebook, please hit that reaction button, hit that follow button on my Facebook and my X page as well, okay? That would really, really mean a lot. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that follow button, all that good stuff. Hit that like button down below. Let's get it past, shoot, we're almost, man, come on. Let's get it to, let's get it to 800, 800 likes on Facebook, all right? I appreciate all y'all. Let's listen to the rest. You didn't just fail me, it failed previous victims. If we don't have the tools necessary, how are we supposed to make decisions? Good decisions. Good ones. I thought I did. I already said what I said. But there's another side to the story too, and that's that's the side where the community, the city of Livingston, Polk County, all of East Texas came together. And, and that's a story that needs to go out too, is that just the people who turned out to help search for Audrey initially, uh, wanted to bring her home alive. I mean, that was incredible in itself. And then after her body was found, all, all the people who helped in that search, all the law enforcement that was out there um, from all over the country, the FBI, uh, the sheriffs, Texas Rangers, uh, sheriff rescue teams from far away as uh, Harris County came to help search for her. And ultimately they found her body. But you know, we want to thank them. But even more so, we want to thank all the people who showed their love and concern. The hate is, to me, is far outweighed by the love. No doubt. I agree. Um, obviously, there's a lot of love. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because they're just kind of praising everyone. And I do appreciate them praising the people who have been putting in the time. Because let's be real, without all of us talking about this, I mean, obviously, I, I was yelling just a second ago in heated because I care. Because there's love for every innocent life that's been snatched against their will off of this planet. You know what I mean? And that's the same thing for every single last one of y'all that are watching this show. Every single last one of y'all that went and slid into the group chats using your social media sleuthing skills and all that because you gave a damn. Same thing with 5-0. They were doing their job, and I'm glad that they were able to find her and, and wrap up that chapter to this story. We still ju have justice to see here very soon, I hope. Okay, so the story ain't done yet, but let's continue. And then something like this, they've got to take home with them. Yeah, a lot of them told us they have a daughter or son. Audrey loved all colors, but because grandma loved purple, she kept telling me, you know, purple's my favorite color too. And it's her father's favorite color. So it became a symbol uh, of who she was. They're asking why, they asked why she wears purple and uh, or why they're her symbol or her color theme is purple because purple's fire I, I don't know if you notice if if i like purple too but just in case you didn't know i think purple's kind of fire but continuing uh, the unity of our family you know it, it was a common common ground to stand on you talk about um you talk about her dad you know son I mean, he's not here today it's still a little bit too hard for him right i mean how is he doing through all of this it's devastating. You know, if you lose your oldest child to so something like this, losing your child in the first place is, is mm. awful. And, and it tears him up. His little, his son is looking for, constantly looking for his big sister. Nobody stops to think about the trauma people are causing him. Mm. Causing my son, causing my grandson. Everybody wants to point the finger at him. And this was nothing he did. I was the one that made the decision to let him move into that camper. Another bombshell. She made the decision to let him live in that camper. Just thought you should know. I was the one that thought I was doing the right thing. Mm. And you think my son would blame me for it, but he doesn't. He knows it. He knows he's the monster. He knows who the monster is. Yeah, and he he lives with us. He's struggling. He's works on where is he down in Houston? Um, but it was a joint effort to raise Audrey between Joshua. Tabby and his sister Julie. Uh, the three of them worked together, and the result is what everybody sees. Uh, she was, she was just so happy. She was learning so much. She was looking forward to her life. She was excited to go, excited but scared. She was going to start junior high. She just, she'll never get that chance. <sighs> did it surprise you at all that Audrey captivated the country like she did? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, she was a little girl. She had her faults. She 
she stood in the corner, but she took her, her, her punishment, but she learned from it. But above that, she would bounce back and show her love even more. And between helping around the family and helping, like VFW, a friend of hers worked there serving food at the VFW. Mm -mm -mm. She constantly asked, could she go and help volunteer? She couldn't work, but she could volunteer and she'd go dance with the, the older veterans and their wives. And she was learning to, to two-step and four-step and square dance and yeah. line dance. And, you know, th they were just amazed by it. I guess that was an indication, but uh, it went far beyond that. We, we couldn't imagine how much her story would catch on. And I mean, there's... I don't think she's individual in this. I think that that story happens in many neighborhoods with many children, but it happened to her and that we've just lost a valuable citizen of Polk County. What is one of your favorite memories with Audrey? Hi, Chihuahua. Oh, there's so many. I think my favorite is that she, she was always there. I would come home from work and she'd be like, Grandma, do your feet hurt? Like just random things that normal kids wouldn't see. And and she just helped me, you know, grandma, your feet hurt, but let me massage your feet. And I know that sounds petty and I know that sounds disgusting to people, but that's where she was. She didn't care. She wanted to help. But I think my favorite memory, honestly, though, was when she was younger, she had dropped a piece of banana on the floor and the shoes I was wearing didn't have any kind of traction. And I fell down the stairs from it. And years later, she'd be like, don't mm. trip on a banana. She just had that sense of humor. She took something that that was an accident and ended up with, you know, a minor injury and just made it into a joke because she was just that kid. She could take the worst of something and make you smile. And my, my favorite memory was how she loved the people around her. Her aunt, our daughter, Julie, went to Japan for a year as an exchange student in high school about five years ago. And when we went to the airport to pick her up, Forget about the barriers and you're not supposed to go across this line. When she saw her Auntie Julie walking down the, <laughs> the pathway to us, covered in her luggage. And she went, busted down the barricade, went running up and jumped into her arms and would not let go. I mean, that's how much she loved her aunt and missed her. That was, that was pure Audrey. And has it settled in that she's no, no longer here? Or is it still... I keep waiting for her to come through the door. I keep hoping it's a miss that somebody didn't identify her right or anything. It's a hope, but I know I can't get it back. But I still wake up in the mornings, wake, I wake up hoping this is a bad dream and she's gonna come run to me and hug me. But I know it can't happen. And I miss her so much. If you could talk to her one more time, what would you say to her? I could talk to her one more time. I never let go. I tell her how much I love her, and how much the family loves her, and how sorry I am that I wasn't able to protect her. Look, that I couldn't see that the devil was led into our house. And I beg for her forgiveness. I would tell her to watch over us, watch over this family. I mean, I truly believe she's up there looking down on us. Damn right she is. You can see. Her grandma needs her support and the whole world needs her love. And if she can continue to be that symbol of love, that's what I would like to like for her to do is, is keep that going. And I want her to know I'd never give up. I'm never going to give up until nobody has to go through this again, until we can get that law changed for her. And I wish it was there ahead of time. Mm. To my dying breath, I will see this through because I couldn't protect her. But I'll be darned if I don't protect somebody else's child. The country Word. knows Audrey Cunningham's name. Do you want her name to stand for more than just this terrible situation and stand for change, stand for a law? Yeah, I mean, we're going forward um, to honor the name of Audrey Cunningham. We're going to start a foundation and nonprofit. Everything will go to helping to promote Audrey's law and to, and to help organizations that help children that have suffered through senseless violence. I'm hoping that we all keep an eye on them and make sure that they actually stick to exactly what they're saying right here. I'm going to keep it a buck. Just saying. I hope that they continue to fight and get 
try to get seek justice for other littles in the name of Audrey. But I'll be watching. Uh, and there's a lot of organizations out there. Uh, Crime Stoppers have been working closely with them for many years. And if we can lend Audrey's name to that cause, that honors her life and, and what happened. And that, that's mainly what we want to do going forward is to honor Audrey Cunningham, our little angel. Mm. That's what she'd want. I know she loves seeing all the love that's being dispersed, but the problem is there's so many people that are also spreading hate. They don't realize my granddaughter, if she was here and heard these things and saw those type of things, that it would destroy her. So rather than holding her up, they'd rather destroy somebody, especially that little girl. I want her memory to be of the love she was, of the love she still is, and not, not diminish who she was as a person. And as this all progresses and moves forward, this criminal case will also progress. Um, have you, since this all started, have you had the opportunity to talk to McDougal one bit at all mm. since she went missing? I spoke with him while she was missing. I don't know if he would tell us where she was or what happened or anything. And that's something also I have to live with. That man had the gall to tell us absolute lies to my face. Hmm. Okay. And then hug me and call me mama. That's because that's up. who he called me all the time. That's what I was to him was a mom figure. And for him to lie to my face and then hug me and tell me, I love you, mama. I'd never do anything to hurt her. It angers me to no end. So many things go through my mind about what I could have done at that point. But I didn't because I want justice. I just wanted her home. I wanted her safe. He lied to you. Lied to our faces. Put the blame somewhere else. I will say, I mean, he's been lying. He been lying to their faces. Okay. Way before she went missing. Way before she went missing. He's been lying to their faces. Okay. Uh, you know, and that's all depending on if they didn't know anything at all. They didn't know his rap sheet at all. All that stuff. Then, yeah. Then they, then they were finessed. He was lying. He conned his way into that camper. Okay. Ah, man. Okay, let me let me continue. We're almost done here. What you could see was an absolute lie. He was in jail when he's stating he was going to do that. So. And that, that will come out in the trial. We don't want to dwell on that right now. Wait, what? Uh, wait, 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 wait. We say what? I'm rolling that back. I'm going to slow that down, too, so we hear that fully. Did she, what did she say? He said what? Why he was in jail? Put the blame somewhere else. What you could see was an absolute lie. He was in jail when he's stating he was going to do that. So, And that, that will come out. What was he going to do while he was in jail? Hold on. I'm rolling that all the way back. We need to hear what she said from the beginning of her little piece here. Say what? Hug me and call me mama. Because that's who he called me all the time. That's what I was to him was a mom figure and for him to lie to my face and then hug me and tell me i love you mama i'd never do anything to hurt her okay it angers me to no end so many things go through my mind about what i could have done at that point but i didn't because i want justice i just wanted her home I wanted her safe. He lied to you? Lied to our faces. Put the blame somewhere else. Oh, she no. could see it was an absolute lie. He was in jail when he's stating he was going to do that. So. And now. Hold on. So I think what's going on is I think she's saying that. He even when he was in jail, he was still saying even when he was arrested, he was still trying to act like he didn't do nothing. I think that's what she's trying to say. Um, but that's that's interesting. I'm speeding it up again. OK, um, but that is a weird that was a weird smattering of words there. Um, but I think that's what she means. I think we'll come out in the trial. We don't want to dwell on that right now. Um, He'll have his moment in court, and 
we will be there. I know Tabby will be there every single day of the trial to look him in the eye. And I know it won't erase what happened, but he will know mm -mm -mm. what he has done and how it has affected us. And he's going to know every day that I'm there, no matter how difficult it's going to be. I want him to see that I never gave up and I'm not giving up on her. And he will look at this face every day to remember how much pain he caused. And he's going to have to look at this face to know the last thing you said to me was an outright lie. And I'm not going to walk away and I'm not going to stand for it. I'm going to seek justice. Justice for Audrey. I think the world wants to hear this, the answer to this question. If you could talk to him right now, right in front of you, what would you say to him? There's nothing I could say that you could put on camera because I'm not a hateful person in general, but I feel nothing but outright hate and disdain for him. And there's not a word that would come out of my mouth that you could put on this camera because ain't nothing I say going to be anything but hate filled. Yeah. It, my parents taught me something very valuable a long time ago. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. I have nothing to say to him. Hard facts. Nothing. He's not worth the air it would take to me, in all honesty. Between all of us, I tell him he's a waste of skin and oxygen. That he doesn't deserve, he doesn't deserve the life that he breathes daily. Is there anything else that I didn't ask that y'all wanted to talk about or mention? I just want to make sure that everyone who is involved in the search for Audrey is recognized uh, from the general public, those who didn't even know her, but offered their well wishes to the uh, first responders, the fire departments, the sheriffs, all the law enforcement yep. that helped bring, bring Audrey home. Even the media putting out there that they needed footage to find out where he had been. I want to thank them. All of y'all. Yeah, we were asked initially not to speak to this press because of the ongoing search and the ongoing investigation. And we respected that. And now that that has concluded, mm. uh, that's why we're out here to to tell our side of the story and, and to thank everybody for, for helping us through this this tough period of time. I also want to thank you and Ms. Grizzly for always being respectful and understanding that we're people and we had emotions and we had things to get through. Or no, we're not through them yet. But the respect from you and Miss Grizzy is why I'm open to you guys. Because there was no disrespect. There was nothing but well wishes. And I appreciate that greatly. Okay. That's the full interview. I mean, there's like 13 seconds left, but it, I'm sure it's just a bunch of him being like, thank you so much for, you know, no disrespect to the reporter because that was a good interview. I'm going to be real. Very telling, very eye-opening of an interview. Is it a good interview for them? It's up to you on how you see the interview, right? And how you perceive and how you receive the information that they're giving us. There are a few takeaways that we just got from here, okay? One, they blame the system for him not being put up on the registry. I agree with that. It's messed up that he wasn't on there, but did they do their due diligence before they let him walk into their house and be the big bad wolf in their home? I don't think so, okay? But at the same time, they lost somebody. Of course, I understand them trying to get Audrey's law in full effect, and I agree. I actually applaud them on that part. Please, by all means, yes, because I think every P word, every lurker that's out here that is, has done something small or 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 big should be on that registry that's what i believe and that's what i feel in my heart of hearts um now through them not fully telling the truth uh um and, it, and if it ends up them being able to move something like this then hey so be it it is what it is and i guess it's whatever they need to make in their own minds so that they can go to sleep at night I guess that's on them, but still, in my mind, they still should be taking some accountability, including the dad. It's not just these two. And it's brave of them. I will say that, too. Some positive things. Okay? Some positive things. It's very brave of them to step forward and speak out, whether we agree with it or not. Because we haven't heard anything from Papa. We haven't heard a damn thing from Dad. Bio Dad is out here just, just I'm sure, trembling in a corner somewhere in the dark. Okay? Drinking his bush lights and smoking his chain, smoking his Marlboro Reds, I'm sure. Okay. But at the end of the day, 
regardless of all those positive things, there were opportunities for them to do something. There were opportunities for them to sit there and say, no, thank you. Hey, just at face value, just at him, forget the, for, forget the aesthetics. Okay. Forget the, 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 the cover of the, of the book, which we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. His wayward eye, the, the tattoos, taters looking taterish. Okay. Put all those things aside. Let's not forget the things that he said to them. Yeah. I have had, I've been in and out of jail because of X, Y, and Z. I've been using chemicals. I've been out here and it's all because of my addictions and all that stuff. Okay. Now, regardless, in my mind, I'm going, would you allow that kind of person into your home? Okay. With that kind of checkered past, with that person who is uh, literally a hairline, a hairline away from using again or causing some crimes to go get a fix. And would you allow them, especially around your kids? I'm telling you right now, instantly I'm saying, hell no. That shows to me that this is somebody who could potentially influence my own child into doing bad things and creating bad habits uh, within my child. That's just number one. Okay, forget the registry for a second. That's just number one. Numero uno. I'm going, my kid, my kid needs to be around nothing but sunshine and daffodils, honey, and 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 pineapples or something like that. Okay. Nothing but good, bright colors and happiness and room to be creative. Right? Nothing but goodness and positivity. Not somebody who's out here trying to get themselves back up on their feet for the 20 umpteenth time. Okay. Now, the other thing, let's be real. Mom, grandma was the one that allowed him to live in that house. Now, let's be real. Maybe they're not technology savvy. Te maybe they're not technologically savvy, but they could have easily had somebody else do their due diligence for them. Do the research, do the background check, make sure that they are not having a monster living in their backyard so closely, not only just to their to uh, Audrey, but to them, too. Let's be real. This, this, these aren't actively, uh, 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 you know, very active individuals. Do they look like they CrossFit? Do they look like they CrossFit? No, they don't. OK, so clearly these are not super, you know, able to take care of themselves types of people. And if you got somebody who's a monster out here that doesn't give a damn, okay? Wouldn't you want to make sure that that person's if he's a dangerous person and he's got a short wick like we've we've learned very easily very quickly, would you want that person around you if you were not physically an able-bodied person? I'm telling you no again. So all these things don't make sense. And yes, I agree 100% with their Audrey Law. It's messed up that this monster was able to lurk through the streets out here, was not on, a, on some sort of list, and he was able to do what he did. But at the end of the day, he finessed these people. And I will say this too, he got lucky. He got the luck of the draw from two or three people that were easily bamboozled by his charm also i will say this too i gonna say because i don't give i don't give a damn and uh i'm gonna say it okay sometimes the symbols that are on their body certain group of people are okay with that just saying some people are cool with that now i know some of you guys will be like how dare you say that but hold on think about it for a second they see that that symbol of hate. They see the little SS thing tattooed on his left shoulder, on his left arm shoulder. Some group of people, they don't give a damn about that. Some people are like, all right, cool, whatever. You support, you know, you, you, you all about that thin blue line. Cool, brother. It don't matter. I don't care. That's how you feel. That's how you feel. Doesn't matter if they th these two are not people who support that kind of thing. But they're sitting there going, hey, 
That's how you feel. That's how you feel. But I, I just like his, his style. I like his his vibe, so on and so forth. They will invite that person in because they don't give a damn about those symbols. But you know for a fact those symbols, if you're willing to put those symbols onto your body permanently for life, that says something about you and your character. He had plenty of opportunities to cover it up if he changed his ways. Let's be real. Let's keep that a buck. Did you see how many tattoos are all over his body? In fact, he has two of those symbols of hate on his body. Right here and right around his in his chesticle area. Let's keep it a buck. Okay? So they were totally fine with his hate-mongering ass and how he he moved around and maneuvered in these streets. Okay? Let's be real. And there are people in this world that will invite people like that with no problem whatsoever. Oh, they'll sit there and say, oh, I'm not that type of guy. But behind closed doors, there's something else. They do have people like this rocking those types of tattoos out for everyone to see, blazing those tattoos with zero care. They'll show up and go to a uh, uh, outdoor events where the dude has his whole sleeve ripped off showing that kind of stuff they don't care because nine times out of ten they about it about it too they just don't have it tattooed on their body let's keep it a buck so now i'm not sitting here saying that they are these type of people but you never know they overlooked that. They they oversaw that. They saw it. They know for a fact that's right there in their face, but they let it go. And they were sitting there going, we're going to rest on Christ. Well, okay. Forget. Forget the cover of the book. What's inside that book? And inside that book is a very disturbing, disturbed individual that only wants to do bad to people and the people that care for him as well. He's done it countless times. This is somebody in this book. Like I said, forget the cover. Inside this book is filled with nothing but crimes and putting innocent people in the way of disturbing violence. Again, as much as we talk about and as much as we say, oh, we don't want this book in this library or we don't want this book being read in f to our kids, which is fine to each their own. But if you got a book like this, would you want to take this book that's filled with all this venom and bring it into your home for your 11 year old child to read, consume and learn from? I'm telling you right now, you're going to say hell no emphatically. So when I see this, I feel for the family. I feel for the grandparents. I really do. No matter what, losing this 11-year-old girl is devastating. It, it hurts my heart, and it should, should hurt every person's heart that is touched by this story internationally. But at the same time, though, they had opportunities to make a choice. They had an opportunity to easily say one syllable word, which is no. They could have said no to this man, and it never happened. Let me get some of these super chats real quick. I appreciate all y'all for being here. Again, thank you, uh, Ber Bernice, for being a member for the past four months. I really do appreciate it. Hi, Pascal. You're so appreciated for everything you do for us. Thank you so much. That means a lot. That really warms my heart. It really, really does. Thank you so much. Reality, thank you so much for the 10. Uh, this grown ad man to believe another grown ad man. Yep. 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 Like I said, he should have the family should have listened to the warnings, to the full-on warning signs, the red flags when he started talking, knowing his past as well. You're a failure, sir. A failure, a failure who failed your family. Yeah, I mean, they they definitely screwed the pooch on this one for show. Okay. Uh, darling Cohen, thank you so much for the 20. Thank you. I believe in second chances, but not in my house where my children lay their heads. They know damn well they didn't do any checks on that man. Thank you. I agree with you on this. Keep up the good work, Pascal. I appreciate your integrity and humility. Thank you so much. Again, thank you so much for the 20. Wow, that really does. I really do appreciate the love. Daniel, thank you so much for the 20. Uh, this trash proudly supported the 
R. Perv. Yep. Smiling and, and laughing with the hate symbol proudly on display in their pics. Exactly. Now they want to portray themselves as victims. They failed Audrey, not the law. I think it's both. But I do agree with everything you said. I think it's both. I think the law screwed up when they let him slide through the cracks. And I also think that they failed by saying yes to this man instead of saying, no, you evil, disturbing mother lover, way too many red flags. This is Red Flag City. You need to kick rocks. Good on you. Go with God. Okay. Happy trails. But you are not going to be anywhere near my daughter or my granddaughter. Bye. Okay. Boy, bye. Okay, darling Cohen, thank you so much for becoming a member. Thank you so, so very much. Welcome to the family. And just like darling, just like darling Cohen, please consider hitting that join button down below and becoming a member if you appreciate the passion. Okay, and the and the comedy. Okay, and the commentary. Okay, that would be greatly appreciated. Whoa, hey, hey, I got to do this too. The highest in the room, Jenny Price. Thank you so much for the 50. Crimson Fun. Uh, see you there. It's very informative and helpful to victims uh, and those who uh, with uh, missing family members and cold cases too. Great opportunity. I'm going to have to look up what you're saying. Uh, the Crimson Fund. Fund. That's news to me. That's new to me. But I'm going to take a look at that, J J uh, Jenny. Thank you, Jenna. Appreciate it, Jenna. And I was running. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Spit hot fire. Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. Thank you so much, Spitfire, for the $4 super sticker. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so, so very much. Penny, thank you so much for becoming a member. Welcome to the family. Thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Just saying, thank you so much for the $3 super sticker. Thank you so much. I appreciate it again. JPL, thank you so much for the 10 super chat. Thank you for showing this interview. This little girl didn't have a chance with these fake Jesus lovers. Yeah. I, you know, they could very well be loving Christ and really believing that they could really be that deep in their faith. That's possible. But I can see where some people say, hey, you know, they're just they're just saying that to, to sway the, the public. You know what I mean? Oh, forgive them because they love Christ. Right. That could be, possibly be it, too. Uh, they have uh, they have. They have creepy next door. They have creepy next door, and they handed her over on a silver platter. I mean, show sure. that's 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 a big horn right there. Okay, that sounds weird, but you know what I mean. All right, damn right. Okay, let's be real. All right, uh, but the, the shoot the trampolines right there. I mean, it's so disturbing, y'all. All of it is extremely, extremely disturbing. Okay, but for real. Never underestimate the power of den denial because that is very real, okay? And I don't know. May maybe they're blinded by faith. I don't know. But something just ain't right with this situation. And again, they had all the time, all the opportunity to just say no. The system is screwed up. Hopefully this Audrey law will change the ways we look at things for real and how some of these monsters are locked up or put on this list, okay? But it's also our responsibility as parents, as guardians, as friends, as neighbors, as villagers to protect our young ones and keep that evil at bay. That's also our responsibility. It's not just the law. This is the reason why we don't bring children into the world and we just throw them over to the governor you know what I mean, of our state and raise my child. No, it's our responsibility to educate, to protect them, and to clean up their dirty diapers. And if you know what I mean, you know exactly what I mean. Hamburger. They, that will tell you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If you your, your kid drops a deuce. It, it, it clears out a whole house. It, it clears out a whole damn neighborhood you know exactly you think you think governor is going to go change millions of diapers i'm telling you no they they're too busy getting their lines their pockets lined up by other organizations i didn't I, I said too much anyway i appreciate all y'all for being here it means a lot thank you guys so much for being here all right happy friday to all you guys okay i'm still traumatized <laughs>
I'm telling you, these diapers are no joke, man. Come on. Okay, yes, gor- yes, yes, Dagnabbit, I have a gorgeous poop machine. That sounds weird. That sounded weird. Hold up, hold up. You know what I meant, though, okay? It, 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 she, she, she cute. <laughs> she cute, though. Okay, let me keep it real. But Man. Man, you, you like, like you're in the middle of sleep. You could, and it's just like, like the, like the Walking Dead. Just, what the hell was? What the hell is that? It will peel the paint off of walls. Damn, you parents, you know exactly what I mean, okay? I am traumatized, okay, Madeline. Yes, I am traumatized, okay. Daniel, again, thank you so much for the 20. I appreciate it. I agree 100%, but I couldn't fit that part uh, about the law failing them too. The law failed them, and they failed Audrey. Birds of a feather flock together. Yes, indeed. Yes, they do. Okay? But anyway, guys, we're back at it. I got to I gotta end the show. I got many miles to go before I sleep tonight, but I appreciate you guys for being here. You guys are amazing. I appreciate the support. Thank you so much for the love. Please do me a favor. Before you head out, hit that like button down below. Don't forget to crush that reaction button if you're watching on Facebook. Of course, follow me on all my social medias. Okay? The Pascal Show, one word. So those of y'all who are watching on Twitter and on any other place, be sure to follow. Okay? The Pascal Show, one word. TikTok and Instagram. Instagram as well. Do not forget to crush that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube. Hit that follow button on my Facebook page. You better do that. You, you better do that. You better do that. Okay? And of course, hit that join button down below. Become a member if you're watching on YouTube. Support this channel. These purple lights don't pay themselves. Do not forget, if you just want to support even more, go check out my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the Pascal Show. It's in the ticker down below. You can see right underneath me, so go and check it out. And, of course, check out pascalmerch.com, okay? And, of course, one more thing. I know there's so many things to list, but check out my second channel, the Pascal Show Clips. Again, the Pascal Show Clips. I'll make sure it is pinned to the top of the chat right now as we speak. And I'll make sure that there's a link for it down in the description box down below as well. Anyway, guys, I appreciate all y'all. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much for watching that with me. I got to get going. But have a great, safe Friday night. You deserve it. We all deserve that. Okay? Go shake a tail feather. Do something positive for yourself. All right. And I'll be seeing you guys very soon. It's time to get going. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys soon. Stay blessed, everybody. This is the Pascal Show. Bye.